Did you ever ride your bike really fast with a lot of vibrations? Well, I know I did. And while many cyclists already know that that way they can damage the pudendal nerve that innervates important organs such as the penis and vagina, not many cyclists know that they could also injure nerves in their hands as they experience constant vibrations and stress from the handlebars. The condition I'm referring to is called ulnar nerve syndrome. It can be dangerous and slowly leave the fingers of our hands paralyzed. There are two simple tests to assess the nerve that can be damaged here. But where does this all take place? Well, this which you can see here is the hand from the palmer view. And this over here is the ulnar nerve. From this side, we can also see the median nerve over here a little bit more laterally, but it is specifically this ulnar nerve that we're interested in. This nerve innervates the medial side of the hand and the little finger. It also innervates the medial side of the ring finger. But there's also the deep branch of the ulnar nerve, and it goes underneath all of these structures over here. This ligament is the transverse carpal ligament, and underneath it is the median nerve with many tendons. Now let's remove all of these structures so we can see the deep branch of the ulnar nerve. And here we can see the deep branch of the ulnar nerve. It innervates this muscle over here, the adductor pollicis, and because of that muscle, the thumb can be adducted adducted. The ulnar nerve, the nerve that innervates the hand, fingers, but also muscles, can be injured in cyclists because of the way we hold the handlebars. But before I explain two simple tests for ulnar tunnel syndrome, there is one thing we can do to prevent this condition. We can subscribe to this channel and like this video. YouTube and other online platforms will not show this video to other cyclists around the world unless we get enough of likes and subscribers. That's just how their algorithms work. The symptoms of the ulnar tunnel syndrome can be subtle and people might not notice these symptoms right away. So a skilled clinician should be able to perform this Tinell's sign provocative test and basically it consists of finding where the nerve is and then tapping the nerve. And if the patient experiences tingling, that is paresthesia, well then the test is positive. This second simple test that can be performed is the Fromman's sign provocative test. And it consists of trying to take away a piece of paper from the patient and patient is asked to hold the paper tightly with his thumb. So basically this way. Now the clinician would be trying to take the paper away from the patient and if the patient cannot hold the paper and then compensate by flexing the thumb this way, well then the test is positive. Now if you remember at the beginning of this video I explained that the ulnar nerve innervates the adductor pollicis that is the adductor of the thumb and that muscle performs the adduction of the thumb. Now if the patient suffers from ulnar tunnel syndrome in which the adductor pollicis innervation is severely affected then he might not be able to perform this adduction strongly enough to hold that sheet of paper. So what the patient ends up doing is flexing his flexor pollicis longus and that way flexes the thumb in order to provide more strength. Strength to hold that sheet of paper which eventually might even slip if the patient has severely affected innervation of the adductor pollicis. This is a dangerous condition and it can leave our fingers paralyzed. Other conditions such as compression of the ulnar nerve at the elbow can cause similar symptoms. A skilled and a competent doctor should be able to diagnose these conditions. Both of you, doctors and patients, 
we can all benefit from videos like these. If you're a doctor and you want to make a video like this one, then go to anatomsky.com. But if you have more questions about pain, tingling, or weakness in your wrist and your hand, then go to this link, symptomsky.com help wrist.